Uh, Professor Anton, yeah. Um, if at first you don't succeed, etc., etc. Um, that's the problem with actually not wanting to comment on someone's video while you're watching it. You want to watch it through till the end. You might forget bits that, uh, points that they've raised, uh, questions that they've asked you directly, uh, and by the time you get to the video, because you've been listening carefully to everything that they're saying, and you forgot the important parts because they were two or three minutes into it. It's been brought to my attention that I've missed a direct question, um, that you, you've asked me what my obligations are, and how do I measure those obligations or determine those obligations. Uh, it's not that different from what Enmendum had been harping on. Um, what about other people? Uh, well, in a sense, that is kind of broadening the subject. It's not quite changing the subject. But that's not really what I was referring to at the beginning. I sort of narrowed the uh, the focus of what I was referring to, uh, to the actual fundamental nature of guilt. Um, and I think that um, you misconstrued my sort of bringing Kramer into that, because I didn't even really, he wasn't really part of that thread. It, I didn't see the two as necessarily linked into each other, and it was just sort of a fun kind of um, view of life, uh, initiative versus trying to catch up all the time. Um, what do I believe that my obligations are to the world? I'll, I'll answer that. Um, it's a tough one. I believe that the outside world has to be managed. I'm, I'm not idealistic in the sense that I, I think that we can eventually get to the point where we've, we can dispense with prisons or handcuffs or um, things like that. I, th I think that, that that does seem to be inevitable. Um, I'm not going to write off the possibility of us ever dispensing with those, but you know, it, it, you know, it would be nice if we if we could stop that. But uh, the way that I see the world now, I don't think that we would do ourselves any favor by any favors by assuming that that's a possibility. Um, so yes, we have we have an obligation uh, to manage ourselves and our relationships with others, and we have to manage society. Um, but we have to understand what the impetus behind managing society is. Um, fundamentally, if you ask me, experience is all that matters, um, our experience of the world. So we have an obligation, in as much as it's possible, um, to follow the golden rule in terms of experience. I don't want other people interfering or altering my experiences in a negative way, Therefore, I have the obligation um, to do the same to them. Now, why does the one follow the other? Why does my um, insistence upon my own autonomy being respected, my own inner autonomy being respected, have anything to do with me respecting someone else's inner autonomy? Well, I don't really see how it how it could follow the one from the other, unless, of course, you assume that experience is ultimately all that matters. Um, that one's inner life trumps one's outer life. It's not as though I'm saying that the outer life doesn't matter. Far from it. It matters. Um, a train hitting me uh, will have some pretty catastrophic effects. Uh, I don't want it to happen. Um, it, but basically, I don't want it to happen because of the way that it's going to affect my inner life. And if we're going to be um, using coercive tools of both the outer and the inner form, uh, or inner uh, types, um, we'd better understand what we're doing. Um, if we reach for the guilt, we have to understand what we're doing. We're not really doing anything ethical. When I try to guilt somebody, um, I'm not making that person a better person. I'm coercing them. If I apply guilt to myself, I'm not making myself a better person. I am coercing myself. What's the difference? Well, you're, you're not doing it to somebody else is the difference. Well, I don't think that it really it's any different. I don't think that I'm any less worthy um, me as the one individual that I am 
than uh, all the other seven billion people on this planet put together. I don't think that we can make a, an ethical case for that. My inner life is as important as anything else I can possibly imagine. And I have to assume, in as much as I can assume anything about anyone else, that their experiences of the world are more, more important to them than the other seven billion inhabitants of this planet put together. I have no right to interfere in something so important to both of us. Now, I understand that that kind of makes us sort of atoms, uh, even various, you know, there's seven billion solipsisms, I suppose you could say. Um, but it is based on the assumption that my experiences are what's important. Um, and if I mess up someone else's experiences, um, even when it's necessary for me to do so, I'm not being a good person. I'm not necessarily being a bad person. I may have to do things like that, but there have to be limits. There have to be limits to the psychological coercion that we apply, and there have to be limits to the physical coercion that we apply. Um, and as I say, I believe that guilt and shame are things that are highly undervalued in our society, um, and we should apply them with a lot less abandon than we currently do. Always the point of ethics, if you ask me, is to avoid any kind of violence against someone else, any kind of interference in the quality of their experience, of their inner experience, if you want, their experience of everything, their view of everything, their inner life, their uh, very... I don't know what, you'd, what, what, what you would say, their very, well, experience of everything. That's what my compass is. That's why I think that, you know, uh, telling somebody to fuck off could be just as bad as, you know, an act of overt violence. Uh, Oscar Wilde, each man kills the thing he loves. Uh, let this by all be heard. Some do it with a careless look, some with a flattering word. The coward does it with a kiss, the brave man with a sword. I think that's what he meant, um, and I may have actually gotten that wrong, the, the quote from the Ballad of Reading Jail. Um, there's many, many ways you can violate somebody. Um, the overt physical one or the sort of outer one is just one one part of the, the, the equation. You can violate somebody internally and, and that's a lot worse because there seem to be no defenses. Um, and guilt, if you ask me, is um, one of the worst violations that you can actually commit against someone. It's sort of the uh, nuclear bomb of uh, internal coercion or internal violence. Hopefully, um, this one has worked. <laughs> this one has answered the question. Thanks.